Hi there, and welcome to Wade's Workshop. In this episode, as the title suggests, I'm going to be making up the brackets for either end for fitting the lead screw protector for the Warco WM180 lathe. Now, if you haven't seen the previous two episodes, I've put them up under Shed Talk 12 Parts 1 and 2, where I showed the turning of the uh, Dalrin top hats that we're using for this project. So if you haven't seen it already, check out those two videos. That's Shed Talk 12 Parts 1 one and two and that shows the Dalrin being machined. I will put up a drawing of the dimensions of these because I've had a lot of interest in this. Uh, the dimensions that I used I mean they can be adapted to suit your lathe but the the rough idea of how it all goes together and I'll put up the drawing and the little chart of the different sizes probably somewhere around here And if anyone wants me to email them that uh, that little sheet with the what's it, I can email them across. Just drop a line to my AIDS, hot, uh, AIDS uh, workshop hotmail email address and I'll see what I can do and try and email you across that document with the figures. So as I was saying, in this episode we're making up the little aluminium holder that goes on the carriage that locks onto the one end. And on the other end, um, I found, we'll, we'll go through what I found, the piece of uh, plastic to make up the one on the headstock end. So we'll get on with machining those. Well, that's all six of the parts done now, all the six top hats. And I think a clean-up is in order. Well, that's a bit cleaner. Still could do with a bit more cleaning, but we'll leave it like that for the time being. So there's the six pieces, all telescoping inside each other. And with a carriage right back, and that's right back against the end. They won't fit in there unless I squeeze them in a bit, so I've got plenty of length there. But very use, uh, rarely use it that far back, and you wouldn't be able to use the tailstock that far back. Let me just show you that. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, if I just move the carriage out of the way, you can see the tailstocks hanging off the back of the lathe there, so you, you wouldn't be machining with a carriage that far back anyway. Um, certainly wouldn't be machining up here because you wouldn't be able to use the tailstock and be a bit iffy. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. Right, so, what I'm thinking of is a sheet metal bracket, when this is in place on the lead screw, a sheet metal bracket around the uh, end collar here, screwed onto there, and the same this end. And I'm just wondering, without getting over elaborate, whether with my... Uh, super glue the gel glue whether i could stick aluminium which i've got a sheet of aluminium here to this nylon so we'll do a little uh, not nylon to the delrin so we'll do a little experiment first just to see if that's feasible so so i've taken a little off cut of the delrin acetyl bar and super glued using this uh, loctite glue power flex and glued a piece of aluminium sheet onto there and not that effective i can break it off so if you can imagine the end ring making a piece of sheet metal with a hole that size and trying to super glue it around the outside to hold it solid probably not the best idea so i think i'm gonna to have to come up with something more substantial so on that note plan b let me do this all in one go for you I'm going to have to buy a bit more aluminium, a bit of larger stock, but I've got this uh, inch by 20. I, I'll probably thin it down a bit. What I'm thinking is to drill a hole through there. There's going to be a, a reasonable, you know, a slip fit through for the end bush. Um, and then fit it into position. If you can imagine when I've got the hole on there, let's uh, draw a little sketch. Where's my pen there? I'm rabbiting a bit here, I'm afraid. Right, can you see this? Yeah. So we're going to drill a hole in there. I'm going to do a hacksaw cut down here somewhere. And a hacksaw cut up through there. And then, as you can imagine, when that's through there, if I put a bolt with a thread down here, and then a bolt, maybe a cap head bolt, something like that, screw the bolt in, and it'll squeeze the two halves together and lock nice and tightly around the end of the nylon. I'll dress the corners round, you know, make it look nice and what have you. And then when that's done, 
I can simply slide the whole unit on once I've sorted the other end as well. Slide it all on, lock it in place, and I'll be able to mark through another hole here, maybe a pair of holes in here, and drill and tap some small holes, maybe M4, in through the side of this block of the carriage here, and that will lock the whole thing solid to the carriage. And to remove it, I simply got to unscrew the bolt on the top, and I can slide the plastic back out of the way to lubricate the lead screw. So that's the plan that I have at the moment. So I've scribed some lines on the block and centre punch where I want the centre. Um, it's a 25mm block, so I've come 12 and a half, 12 and a half, 12 and a half for a hole where I'm going to put a bore through to sit that in there and we'll round the corners off afterwards make it look nice and neat so next job drill a 20 mil hole through there or a hole to be a slip fit on the smallest bush so we'll get straight on with that and I think we'll do it in the four jaw chuck so it's just about to clock that block up in the four jaw chuck and Jackie comes down and says we got to go shopping so went shopping and I had it on my mind, oh, I want to order some material to do this bracket on the large end of the um, lead screw cover. Anyway, I'm walking around Lidl's, and I see plastic chopping boards. 8mm thick, black plastic, probably nylon of some description, or HDPE, or whatever it is. Perfect, I've got the nylon material I need to make the bracket for the headstock end. So yeah, I'll machine the headstock end bracket out of a chopping board. $3.99 for two. I'm going to use a part of one of them and the other one, well, it's always handy to have a bit of probably 9mm nylon material about. Happy days. So I place the aluminium block roughly in position in the four jaw chuck. As you can see, one of the legs is sticking out a fair way, but there's still plenty of engagement on the teeth because it's got a big offset. And the way I clock up the centre point, I've got the centre in the tailstock here, and I've got what I call my centre in pin. Now, it's a piece of ground, it's drill rod, um, silver steel we call it. That end has been accurately machined by clocking it up and machining the taper on that end. And this end has been centre drilled on this end very accurately again, clocked up and centre drilled. So I know that the centres of this rod run true to the OD. So I simply stick the hollow end on the centre, hold on, stick the pointy end in my centre pop, hollow end in the centre, just loosely lock it down so that I can still revolve it, let's just put my clock up on top, somewhere close to the chuck, and you can see it's running out at the moment, so basically I can clock that up in the conventional manner. So, low point is there. Loosen that off a touch on the top. There's a high point. Low point is still there. High point opposite again. High point is now this end. Touch more. And just a tiny bit there, that jaw is still loose. I'll just go around the four of them, just making sure I haven't got a loose jaw. I'm trying to keep out of the way of the camera shot here. There we are. Close enough for what I want. Yeah. Happy days. So that. I'll try and bring you around without too much jerkiness. Oh, I'm moving the tripod with the camera on. As you can see, I got the centre 
in the centre pop, the rod moves up and down as the centre pop does, and I can clock in on the rod. That's my simple way of doing it. It's a simple little tool to make, this rod, with a bit of silver steel. Clock it up in the four jaw, centre drill one end, clock it up in the four jaw, turn the taper on the other end, and you've got it forever then for setting up. So I just clocked that all up, and realised I've cocked it up. I need to drill a 20mm hole through there, because it's against the back shoulder of this jaw. I'm going to be drilling through into the jaw, so it's going to follow the jaw. So I'm going to have to turn this jaw round as well. Um, so, yeah, not too much of a problem, it won't stick out too far. But I'm going to have to turn this jaw around as well. I spun the jaw around, I just loosened it off, put it in the other way, tightened it up, put my rod back in and quickly clocked it back in. It was only a, a quick, quick job to do, but there we are. I can't go too fast with this, because we've got offset weight in the chuck, and it's only been a tiny little lathe. The whole workshop will be shaking. In fact, I can feel it shaking on the bench now. Now, I didn't send a drill the end of this. I've just uh, gone straight in with the drill onto the centre pop. It is wobbling a little bit, but not too drastic. So I'll straight in with an 8mm. I'll probably put something like a 12 in there now. In fact, I'll do that while we wait. Or while you watch. Just, uh, just knock that off a second. Always uh, a bit iffy when you've got something offset like that. It's uh, harder to see when you've got something flying around you can catch yourself on. So whenever you've got something that's... Uh, not centre in the chuck or what have you, or centred but not offset. Always be wary that uh, you've got this one jaw that's stuck out and it might not be quite as obvious as, as normal. <laughs> Whacking a 12 mil through there. I'll double check my diameter and show it's uh, just with my lift. I actually think it's 20 mil, but uh, again, we'll just do it to a slip fit. I think I can probably put like a, I don't know, 18 mil drill, should we try? I've got an 18 mil drill here on the most taper two. We'll bring that in. We'll try that in there. The more around the correct speed for the drill now that we've got up in size. So I'm not that worried about the. Uh, oh, I quite look can't give my drill properly. There we are. At 18. So get that drill out the way. Get that swarf out the way. And I'm going to get the boring bar up and bore it out to the size we want, which is 20 mil or just a snap over 20 mil. Here we are. That's more like it. I'm running about. I don't know whether you'll pick up this vibration, but uh, let me just, uh, bear with me a second. I speed it up. Now, you can't see it on screen, but if I go up to about 600, my lathe is jumping around all over the place. Because of the weight that's offset. So I'll just drop it back, I'm on about 480 here. 
I'll just touch off there we go give myself a zero on the DRO I know that's 18 mil I can take it to at least 19 so I'll go half mil aside and then we'll give it a measure we'll pour that through <coughs> So I've been boring it out, creeping up on it. <coughs> I want it to be a, a sort of running bit on this so that when I nip up the clamp screw, it'll be tight. I'll be careful not to go too deep on this. That's right through. Well that is just entering and I don't want it tight tight so I'm going to take perhaps another flower side of it. See if I can speed it up a bit. No, we're wobbling again. That's about it. So I'm just scratching a couple of flour out and we'll put a little chamfer on. In fact, I think while I've got it up in the chuck like this, I'm going to face this side back because this material is way too thick. Oh, I'm going to drop it back so it's about 10 mil thick because it's 20 mil thick at the moment. Is it 20? Yeah, 20 mil thick at the moment, and that's just way overkill for what I want. So that should now. There we go. Lovely job. Yeah, so I think I'll put a normal tool up and I'm going to face this back till I've got a thickness of about 10 mil. So that'll be the next job and then I'll shuffle that bore after. So I'll just change my tool posts over. Back to my normal one. Don't need my boring tool post anymore. Or my tool post for boring, should we say? Here we are, turning tool. Do it. Now I'll just check that nothing's going to foul here. Well, no, it only gives me about two or three mil. Let me just. Uh, the bottom of this jaw is just about to foul on the uh, on my carriage lock. So I just wind the compound forward a bit to bring that out of out of play, as it were. Right, can I get 10 mil out of there? Uh, only just. Let's do a couple more turns on my compound. Let's have a look now. Oh yeah. I'll get 10 mil easy out of there. Okay, so. Hopefully, I can come that far back. We're getting close. Oh, we're getting mighty close. Ah, slight problem. All right, let's. Uh, now we got it, and I can come ten mil forward. All right, again, same problem. Set a zero. I think I'll uh, lock the carriage off for this. Stop it diving in. I'm going to take a miller pass. I don't want to go in slow, but it is an intermittent cut. It's 
So I'll do this one first pass, face it off. I'll stop it and show you, and then I'm basically going to do the same thing another ten times. Or another nine times. Because in the ideal world, I'd whack it in the vice of my mini machine, skim it down. If I had a band saw, I'd probably saw that block in half. probably would have done it before we started. Anyway, you have to make do with what you got. circle there and that's it faced so I'll just knock that off and as you can see I faced a mill off that front face and it's all nice and shiny so I'm going to keep going until we're about yeah 10 12 mil thick something like that uh, taking a mill at a time so I'll just loose off the carriage lock got the two mil that time I think that's about as far as we can go Check for clearance and a wait to go. And we'll bring you back when we're done. So I've used a bit of uh, poor man's marking blue on here to mark out roughly where I want my holes. And I can see that the actual plate is a little bit longer than what I want. So I offered it up and eyeballed it up to where it's going to go. And I'm just going to hacksaw it off to the line. Oop. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> Tighten the vice up a bit more. <laughs> I think I'll just explain myself a little better. I will set the pop hole in the centre there. I'm going to drill right through there. First of all, with an M5 tapping drill, 4.2 mil, all the way through to take that bolt in the centre there. And then M5 clearance on those two, probably 5.1, 5.2 mil, right through these two holes with a little uh, little shunt on both sides for clamping it to the carriage. So we'll get on and drill those. So 4.2 mil drill, right through. So here's the basic layout of our little bracket for the small end. As you can see, Alan bolt through the hole. Um, apologies for missing the drilling, but it's basically drilling and tapping. Tapping drill right the way through, then clearance drill on the bolt down to the cut line. I hacksawed down, hacksawed through there, and a couple of clearance holes there. So tap the bottom hole, put the bolt in. When I tighten the bolt, it squeezes the two halves together and it clamps on the rod like Oop. like so and that's a real solid fit so as you can imagine it's going to go in there obviously over the top of the lead screw and i got two bolt holes to drill a couple of little m4 tapped holes in here to locate that end so my next step is going to be to make something very similar in the plastic from the chopping boards i bought earlier to go on the other end obviously it'll have a hole in it um, a 40 mil hole to cover the 40 mil something similar again a couple of hacksaw cuts bolt through it to clamp onto there flange sticking out for me to bolt it onto the headstock end so i'll go ahead and make that That's one side Make sure you can still see. Yeah. See, it's not critical this. I've marked it out and I think it's 50 mil by, by 70 mil. And my look 
looking all right yet. Okay, chopping a chopping board. <laughs> so I put a piece of nylon up in the four jaw. Um, same method as I used last time. I'm just about to start drilling it, and I just thought I'd point out that I've left it standing out a couple of mil off the shoulder of the jaw. So I had to clock the face as well, but you can see a couple of mil gap. So that when I bore it out, my boring bar isn't going to hit the jaw. I can just bore it very carefully to depth against the stop, and I'm not going to hit the... Uh, the two jaws and you can see where's the top one you can see the gap here the same the outer jaws the ones that aren't out far that's no problem i'm going to miss those but i would come through and hit these jaws which are reversed so i've just left probably a two mil gap in there and i'll set a stop for the boring bar so i don't hit the jaw when i'm boring it out i'm just hand feeding it through until i break through the other side Okay, I'm going to stop it there and set my fixed stop so the carriage won't go any further in that way, or the tool won't go any further in, and I know I'm going to, not going to hit my jaws. And if I can look at it, I can see that my tip is just coming through the back of the material. So there we are. So, okay, that should be it. Oh, that fits in there nicely. A little bit of movement, and that'll be taken up by the clamping. So I'll just shamper that leading edge with my uh, little scraper here. Oh, go a bit, a bit keener than that. And that's ready for drilling filing fitting so I've cut away a little corner of excess material on the top and I think I missed the, most of the drilling of this last time so I've tend to pop the mark somewhere appropriate and I'm going to drill down through the part with an M5 tapping drill Drill should be long enough to go right through. Goodness only knows what this stuff is going to tap like, but it doesn't need a lot of uh, strength in the thread just to clamp that uh, tube up, so we should be okay. <laughs> it taps easy, I'll give it that. <laughs> Got in the full depth of the tap. Dress this bit down so that when it's in the clamp position we've got a flat top and do some tinkering tidy and see how we go from there. So some 10 minutes later with a bit of filing and a bit of deburring and taking off the corners that sort of thing we've got the finished article which will hold the large tube. Bolt in the top easy accessible again so that I can pull the tube out to lubricate the screw. And once it's bolted in its position there on the lead screw with two tapped holes in the uh, in the body of the lathe here, it can sit there and be fixed. So that's the six. Let's have a look. Put them together. Would be, or will be in a minute. Hang on. Just getting all the bits together. There we go. So that's the six pieces of tube. Bracket for this end. Stick the other one on. And the bracket for that end. Ready for assembly. So I think we've got enough for a video here. It's going to be quite a long one, I think. So we've got the two brackets, one either end. We've got the six tubes. Our next procedure is be going to be to fit it all up, drill the holes, bolt it together and what have you. And that'll be for probably part two of this. Well, there we have it that's all the parts complete 
In the next episode, I'll show you how we go about fitting it onto the Walco WM180 lathe. So thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you all in part two.